Well guys, cold morning here. Not real cold, but nothing like Tyson gets up there in Canada. I was, uh, I lived in Wyoming for, oh what, two years there, working up there, and that's cold country up there too. Uh, we got about three degrees right now here in Klamath Falls. But uh, it's cold enough that I'm not even, as I've tried, I've left this out before, this new truck. And it, this truck didn't come with a grid heater on it. So a little story here, okay. When I got sick and stuff this early this winter, I was in the process. I had another 12-valve Cummins, but it was a 12-valve with a VE pump off of, out of a pickup. And that 12-valve had a grid heater on it. This one did not come with a grid heater. Uh, so I robbed the relays off that pickup down there, off that engine, and I put this grid heater in here. And I was all in the process of wiring it when I got sick and all that crap. Anyways, got sick, didn't finish it. Okay. So, uh, other day, I went and started this thing, and I was going to let it warm up, and I actually walked back in the house and looked back outside, and I could see smoke boiling out of the hood, and I ran back outside, and the fuel shut off solenoid, popped the hood, coil was on fire. So, uh, shut the key off, wouldn't shut off, so I unplugged it, grabbed it up here and unplugged it, and put the fire out. <laughs> And so the coil was ruined. So anyway, I <laughs> I uh, ordered another coil for it. And actually, I, I ordered one from Freightliner. Freightliner wanted like 400 bucks for a fuel shut off solenoid. So I got one for a Dodge pickup. And the Dodge pickup one, the holes were narrower. So to be honest with you guys, I had drilled two holes offset from the original holes and clocked it a little bit different and put it in there and bolted it in. It was only 97 bucks from, from Napa versus $400 from... Freightliner. So, turn the key on, and basically you got three wires here. You got a fuel, you got your ground, you got your pull-in wire, and you got your uh, hold-in wire. The red wire's hold-in, the white wire's pull-in, the black wire's ground. So, what was going on is over here, You got two relays. This is your start relay, and this is your this is goes into the pull-in uh, wire. And what was happening? This relay here was sticking closed. It was latched all the time, so I was getting power on the pull-in and the pull-in all the time, and that's what burnt that coil up. And that's why it wouldn't shut off because that relay was stuck. So I had already mounted these, and you can see the little bit of red paint on this coil here, this relay. I robbed one of these and put over there so I could get this to work properly. So now I want my grid heater hooked up because it's cold and it don't want to start. So I bought a whole new assembly we're going to put on there. And it's going to be sitting a little bit different because they've got the mounts different. I, the other one I had to take the tabs and bend them over and, and stuff. But uh, let's do that real quick and wire this thing up. This shouldn't be too bad to do. I don't have the control wires for it hooked up yet. I got these grounds hooked up. But we're just gonna put the power probe on this terminal here and make it click on and get the truck started because I gotta get going this morning. Let's see, I got a little step stool in here <laughs> to where I could carry that around with me. Yeah, I was lived up in Wyoming uh, for a couple years there in Gillette, Wyoming. and Yeah, it smelled like Canada. There's some cold shit up there, man. Once you go up there and you come down here and you realize this ain't really that cold. <laughs> Every once in a while, like Two or three years ago, we had like three days in a row here of like 27, 28 below zero. And it just happens about for three days, maybe once every two years, three years. And that's all we get. I remember that one of my customers, his service truck, there's a mechanic for one of the nurseries, old Steve, he, he's got a 6'4". And that old Ford right there, I started it right up on that 20 below zero morning. Fired right up. Didn't have it plugged in or nothing. 
I mean, it sounded like it was coming apart when it started, but uh, <laughs> I started to ride up and headed out, and I got right behind him on Highway 97, and his fuel kept freezing up on him. I'd get under there and thaw him out a little bit, and he'd make it about five or six miles further, and he'd freeze up again, and... Anyway, dude, finally made it in. still good so yeah you gotta realize too that different climates that I've learned I was in the Navy and was all over the world that Different climates have different kinds of cold, too. You can go down in the southern parts of the United States and... What the hell's wrong with this thing? I don't like the cold either. Anyway, you can go down to a real humid climate where it's 30 degrees. That cold, that, that wet cold is a killer, man. Twist that a little bit. It's got that bushing on there. I'm gonna have to drill another hole out here or something. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something a little bit different. Drill another hole. Okay. So, I'm trying to remember. So the grounds are hooked to these inside posts, right? Where are the grounds? I had the grounds. That's power out. Or not, well, not grounds. What am I talking about? The power in. I guess it don't really matter, does it? I guess we'll put these here. That's they're going to reach. down to the shop down there and mount this a little better this is pretty chicken shit here the other one tightened up because it didn't have these rubber bushings on it I tried starting it the other day when it was like 20 believe 20 degrees out here and it wouldn't start I had to bring the space heater there and put it underneath it and it wouldn't start So you know I don't, don't even try it without this heat at uh, not even worth trying. goat my wife and her goats those are gonna be our power wires
I almost need to take a jumper and hook between those two. So both relays kick on if I'm gonna do it with a power probe. Nope, my door's so shut. because I took the wires off the battery when I swapped that stuff because I didn't want those hooked up. Uh, 9.16. Oh, just a regular open-end wrench would work way better than that box-ended one. Tape together and that's kind of screwing me up a little bit. What about hooking that one there? Maybe. Uh, there we go. I'm losing my fucking mind here. What do I do with the battery nut? Everything's about 10 times as harder. Everybody says, oh, it's twice as hard when you're cold. No, it's 10 times harder when it's cold. Mm. Guys like that, Tyson up there, Northern Farmer, and guys out there, <laughs> always said they're pretty tough people that can stand that shit all the time. All right. Okay, so we got those wired. I need my power probe. Maybe a piece of wire, just a screwdriver. That's what I'll do, just for now, just to get this thing started. Get down in the shop there where it's a little bit warmer and uh, <laughs> finish wiring it. What a mess, what a mess. Yeah, nothing really likes the cold, does it? This rat's nest unwound. Driver and jump across that. Uh. Leave the two little grounds hooked up. Okay, let's turn that annoying beeper off. Let's click in. Let's go like this.
Well, that's not really working, is it? Shit. Come on. Hmm. That's not really working. It's got that big insulated terminal on there and it's not really working. I guess we'll hold it on and see if we can get one relay to make it go hot enough. Either that or I'm going to have to tie a jumper wire to it for now. I feel heat in it. Oh yeah. Leave her on for a little while here. I feel heat in it. I don't know if it's enough though. Let's try it. get it started. I guarantee it wouldn't have ever started without it. I think I got the damn. switch in the cab I need to put it to like a push button or a, a push button or a self center toggle that way I don't leave it on now I can get to work I tried starting it the other day when it was 20 degrees and it wouldn't it wouldn't start. Crank and crank and smoke and I don't really like using ether on stuff so I went and got a space heater, stuck it up there underneath the oil pan and left it there for a little bit and then it started up. Well this one here we know is garbage. Let's throw this piece of shit away. hang on to this one all right guys well I'll see you when I get down to the shop here when we get to work all right guys we're at another stop here oh, I gotta put my beanie on she's a cold one out there trouble are you tired partner you've been running around like a damn fool finally let Duke get in the co-pilot seat okay let's get out and uh Freeze her butts off, huh? I'm gonna turn the PTO on. Uh, I do wish there were some more cup holders and stuff in this thing. Okay, you maniacs. Easy, Daisy, easy. You, golly, girl, you gotta figure out how to jump out of there. Come on, trouble. Trouble's a little bit smarter. And I'll get yeah, I'll grab you, dude. Come here, bud. Come here, I got you, bud. I know this is tough for you. You can't stick your butt against me because then I can't get old again. 
quit squirming around when I get a hold of you. Yeah, why don't you let me grab you and that way you don't do a face plant. <sighs> Goofy girl. Got to blow all that snow off there so we can get back into this thing. Okay. valve block here. We want to polish. This spool here has been hanging up. So. I thought maybe the return spring might have been broken first. But Up here at the top, it's got some real rough spots on it. Right in there, I don't know if you can see those spots. They got water in their hydraulic fluid. And they need to dump that oil. Okay, I got these bench buddies here. Get air hose. That's another thing I need to get a, I got to build a whip to where I go to use the reel and just put a whip with a small hose on there. That way I don't have to drag this other hose out. electric fence off when I pulled in here we were over the other day taking the squeeze apart and the, the hay squeeze was actually over there in the barn and old Duke got the shit socked out of him you know you could screw a dog up shocking him that bad so I went over there and turned it off when I pulled in here today WD-40. Okay, we're gonna get some emery cloth, clean some of this up. Let me find some emery cloth. I'm sure, I remember where I put that. Let's, uh, clamp this lightly in the vise. I want to bend those ears in. Right here. 
spool is pretty rough, pretty rough shape. the other side. Now I went to actually one call before this one. One of my customers, he uses me, he's used me for years. He's an excellent customer. I got a lot of good customers to be honest with you. Be completely honest with you some of my customers watched my video i guess on my rant when i was saying there ain't nothing going on and well they're starting to throw a bunch of work my way because they don't want me to leave i've had a couple calls from a couple of them one of them was a big nursery owner he said mike said bullshit you're leaving i said what he said i've seen that video he says you need work you call me I said, really? He goes, yeah, I don't want you leaving. I said, well, I didn't mean to piss you off. I go, well, you didn't piss me off. I just, God damn it, I need you, and you get all my stuff fixed. So, so I don't know. It's like some of these guys don't really want me going anywhere, so I don't know what to do. I don't know. or something right there. Pretty good one too. Girl, shit, this is probably like 60s model. These things, these little heisters like this have been around forever. Good old machines, I'll tell you what, they're tough as nails. Oh, H50s and H65s and they're tough sons of bitches, I'll tell you. This one's got a 53 Series Detroit in it. You'll hear it shortly. Get the batteries up. Yeah, it's pretty gouged up. Definitely ain't gonna hurt nothing. I think that rust got on there and flaked it is what it did. It flaked the chrome off the spool or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think these are chrome. I think they're just machined. All you machine machining guys could probably tell me. Yeah, I've been talking old Jim. If I ever get the money, I'm gonna start buying line boring equipment and start learning how to do it. I think there's pretty good money in that. Might as well do the other spool too while we're here. I'm gonna blow our nozzle, there's a bunch of dirt and shit in that return spring.
This is the guy here that his daughter's got cancer that owns this. Breaks my heart. Breaks my heart, it really does, for a kid to get something like that. No kid deserves that shit. Stroke valve was hanging. We'll take it out too. But I gotta take this other spool loose. Okay, guys, I'm gonna polish this other spool and charge the battery on the camera. See, it's uh. Yeah, it's down to like 13%. Okay, this is not going to be any fun at all. So I've been really quite sure how I'm going to do it. It's a pretty heavy valve. Okay, so I need to go... That's the top. Alright. Let me lay in here. And... What a pain in the ass. Is this... Total linkage. I wonder if we can take that collar pin out of there and rock that back and get that pedal out of our way. What the hell's going on here? I'm all fingers here. Yes, that's the way to do that. I could tell that that was going to be an ass ache getting that thing to stay out of the way. Damn so. I'm trying to get this deal gone, give me here and lay on it. It's pretty slick on the snow though. ready if I can even get that far I don't know but... oh. so you want to be a mechanic a diesel mechanic <laughs> that's all I tell these guys you want to go lay in your belly in the snow and work on something have at it there big guy thinking if I could get my crane in here somewhere and get a strap on that fucker and hold it. Okay, what can we do here? What can we do here? Just manhandle it or should I lay on my gut and lay over the top of it and pull it in and stick my knee on the head of the bolt. Maybe that'll work, huh? Okay, let's try that. Now that we got the valve in there somewhat. Let me climb up here and see if I can lay on my belly across the dash here and pull it on up in there. This is where two hands would be very, very helpful on one of these things. And I don't know about this. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Huh. Oh, cool. 
right pedal is right in the fucking way. to go all the way in. Uh, uh, hung up on this valve. Uh, good times, good times. Just kind of hanging on that bolt. I gotta warm my hands up, guys. My hands are cold from grabbing that cold, cold valve. This is where I probably could use some gloves, but I don't have any. I got some welding gloves. Okay, uh, let's try this again. something on that bow or that head of the bolt to hold the bolt in a certain position would be really nice. I wonder if I can wedge something in there and hold that bolt. Uh, let me let me figure. Let's see if I can wedge something in there. I think they handle this rubber mallet. up a little bit but it can't move very far so then I might be able to get it from this side instead of fighting it over that lean across that dam uh, here we go <laughs> now you're using your head your back. I'm gonna fucking tighten it up a little bit with an impact, pull it in a little bit, then stick the rest of the bolts in. I just, I've seen that piece of iron there. I just thought, you know what? I can shove something in there to keep that bolt from sliding out to where it wouldn't. You know, slide through the hole in the valve. Okay, let's see. It's gonna be the easiest way to do this one, probably. Ah. What trouble? What are you doing with the ice? What a wonderland, isn't it? Now we can take that. Twist it. Get the rest of the bolts in there now. <sighs> I'm trying to figure out where my best spot to be is here. Uh.
of the other bolt will go in for it. Sit that up. Cold and there's snow on the ground, everything seems like it takes twice as long, if not more. Everything seems like it's three times harder. Now, now, my, now my extension, the anvil is plugged up, but we go get a screwdriver and dig it. <coughs> on the outside and hold it from the inside, I'm guessing. by hand. return like I remember how it went yeah, I figured out some hoses on here now all right let's see if I can get this thing to start oh. yeah. I think it's a 
think it's an ether junkie too. They got a can of ether sitting on it. Spray, maybe. Uh. Ain't much coming out of there. Oh, great. The ignition is froze on it. propane torch with me so I can <laughs> heat it up I think it might be uh, see that's one of the things I haven't stuck in here yet is a propane torch uh, got my cutting torch I guess I could wheel it out be nice if you could get that to unstick Let's see if we can just barely tap on it tap on this thing so you can get her to I got it. Yeah. Oh, the hell's it in gear? There. in there. It's got to go through the air cleaner and everything to get in there.
before, I mean, it would do it every single time. Now it's about one every three, three or four times. When you let the mask down all the way, you'll go to raise it back up and it doesn't want to raise back up. And then you'll have to jockey that valve back and forth. So I don't know if there's a check sticking in here or a shuttle valve somewhere in that valve block. It's hanging up. I thought maybe the spool was sticking because it was so rough. There's obviously something else going on here in that valve block. It's worn out what it is. Well, let me, I'm gonna pull it back under the barn over there. Okay, I need to call him, see what he wants to do with this thing. He don't use it that much anyway, but... Alright guys, yeah, thanks for watching this. I don't know if we gained a whole lot on this project. I told him, I said, I'm really not for sure. I took everything that I could see out. I don't know. It's kind of weird. You let it down and you play with the valve and then it goes back up. Something in that valve is not acting right. Might have to pull it back apart and uh, completely strip it and see what's going on. I'm going to call the hydraulic shop and if he talk to him about it too. See if he knows, has any ideas what might be hanging up.